This valley is amazing! After one of the most beautiful yet dangerous motorcycle rides of my life, filled with wet, windy roads, waterfalls, and recent rock slides, I finally made it into the Cow River Valley just outside of Notrang. From here, I was back in civilization, dealing with hectic traffic as I made my way to my beachfront hotel where I planned to stay for a couple nights. Okay, so the most expensive hotel room I've gotten so far, $10 a night, but... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Boom! So after checking into my hotel room, I decided it was time to head to the beach and do some exploring. Now this is a beach. Ooh, yeah. After leaving the beach, I went to go check out some ancient ruins at a place called the Panagar Tower, a 7,000-year-old Hindu temple overlooking the bay with some magnificent carved edifices and beautiful little temple structures. This was a great way to end the afternoon. Later that night, I wasn't feeling too well after having eaten probably my 20th banh mi sandwich from a street cart vendor. This one finally got me. I ended up being quite sick and spending the next two or three days laid up in my hotel room or laid up at the beach with a pretty bad upset stomach, but with a beautiful view to offset how bad I was feeling. And to be honest, I hadn't spent much time relaxing. So this was a good time to catch up on some books and just lay around and do nothing at the beach in Vietnam. After a few days of rest and recuperation, I decided I was finally feeling well enough to ride and so decided to get back on my iron horse and explore some more of the beautiful coast of Southeast Vietnam. I decided to say, get myself a beachfront hotel room, to shower and get drunk. Boom! Not as nice of a view as my other place, but pretty decent view. Over the next couple days, I passed through some rather insignificant towns 
spent the night and basically was still recovering from my illness in Nha But I still got to visit some beautiful sites along the way, heading north to Hoi An. Once in Hoi An, I was told by many people that I had to go check out the Ban Mi Queen, the famous Ban Mi sandwich restaurant that is world renowned from backpackers to locals alike. After eating one of the most delicious banh mi sandwiches of my entire life and exploring a little bit of downtown Hoi An, I made my way up the coast for another 30 minutes to what would be my final destination of Da Nang. I knew that Da Nang would be my last stop on this trip as I had a friend here from grad school that I hadn't seen in years and I was running out of time to continue exploring. So I had to sell my bike and head back to China so I could get back to the real world. Come on, come on, come on. Look at the size of it. It's huge. It's such a big chicken, a big rooster. Hey guys. One of the highlights of Da Nang is a beautiful giant Buddha statue complex up on the mountain overlooking the bay. This makes for a beautiful little motorcycle day trip and is a great place to get some aerial views of Da Nang. So I'm in this pretty crazy cave right now.
Can't really see anything over there. It's like inside a Buddhist temple and they're like playing cool music and there's this awesome entrance. I will say that Da Nang was probably my favorite city of all the places I went. Da Nang had more to offer for me. It had both the mountains and the beach. It was a bit more lively. And plus I finally had a friend to hang out with, go to the beach, go drinking, or just go exploring. My time in Vietnam was now over, but I knew I'd be back again soon, as I had only motorcycled through half the country. My plan was to come back to Da Nang, buy another motorbike, and travel the rest of the way up to Hanoi. So until I see you again, Vietnam, I say thanks for all the fun, beauty, adventure, and exciting times, and I look forward to seeing you again.